she's going to start with some prayer. Because we're a team today. <laughs> Lord, just thank you for today and this opportunity to just speak to these ladies. Lord, I ask that you would come and you would minister to us. That you would speak a word in time. In Jesus' name. Amen. So, I have a question. I, I want somebody to give me a woman's name in the Bible. Ruth. Ruth. Another one. Okay. Deborah. Deborah. Did you say Deborah? Yeah. Mama. Mary. Naomi. Woo! That's the best one there. <laughs> okay. So when I was talking to Naomi, I said, so when people give us names out of the Bible, for women. Who do they talk about? They talk about Ruth and Esther and Deborah and Mary and Martha and Naomi. And you. You know, I go, but they did these really great things. And we remember them. But do we remember um, other people? <laughs> Forgive my pronunciation, but I'm not good in Hebrew. <laughs> Pua and Shifra. Anybody know who they were? <laughs> they were the midwives who refused oh. to do what Pharaoh told them, which was to kill all the boys, because they believed in God. Who was, again, Hebrew? Yochebed. That's Moses' his mother. Moses saved the nation, and nobody knows his mother's name. Except for you. Everybody knows Deborah. She was a judge. Do we know who actually won the war? Jail. The woman who put the tent peg through her sister's head. Wow. And we know Bathsheba, and we know Micah, and we know those, but do we know Abigail? She was, she saved her family after her husband was extremely stupid. His name meant fool. <laughs> there you go. But she saved the family and became one of David's wives. And there's Mary. There's Mary, the mother of Jesus. There's Mary and Martha. There's Martha. There's Mary Magdalene. Do we know who Lois and Eunice were? Timothy's, Timothy's grandmother and mother yeah. could talk to him about God before it was popular. We know um, Paul. Do we know Phoebe? She was a deaconess in the church. Joanna and Susanna ministered to Jesus. And, well, there's these other women that, Persis and Tefina and Tefosa, they all went with Paul around where he went and helped spread the gospel. But nobody talks about it. And there were the daughters of Zelophia. There was five of them. And he had died in the wilderness before they reached the promised land. And back then, the, um, the law was that the sons received the inheritance. Well, their father had no son. So when they were dividing up the land, they went to Moses and they said, 
what about us? What about our father? And they didn't go quietly. They didn't come in and go, um, I have a question. No, they went in boldly to talk to Moses. And because he listened to them, the whole law was changed that women could then receive inheritance as long as they did not marry outside of the tribe. And all of these people had the same thing in common as Ruth and Esther and Deborah and Mary and Martha and Naomi. They all had a relationship. That's why this box is here. <laughs> teacher, so you have to forgive me for teaching, <laughs> not preaching. <laughs> yeah. But teachers require participation, so you can see where I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Are any of you guys satisfied with your relationship with Jesus? Okay. I'm just checking. I've never seen anybody raise their hands on that question. I have to ask. ask. <laughs> Alright. So is she so lovely led up to relationships? Do we know the actual definition of relationship? Come on. No, he's perfect. <laughs> Throw it out there. What do you think? No. of relationship is a noun. It is the way in which two or more concepts, objects, or people are connected or the state of being connected. It is uh, also the state of being connected by blood or marriage. The way in which two or more people or groups regard and behave toward each other and an emotional or sexual behavior between two people. So most of us might have been married once or twice. <laughs> some of us have never some of us had a crush so we understand the emotional deal we understand emotional deals with people we understand family you can't kill them but you know it's there <laughs> but relationships with Jesus is ba based on the same principles as relationships in the physical it's emotional. Gosh darn it. They're related. They're family. They're physical. Blood, blood, relation. You, you know, some people tried to kill them. It worked once. <laughs> but that was it. <laughs> it didn't work. It didn't work again. Um, it's, you know, two objects. There's things you can see relationally between Jesus. You can see them in the spiritual, and you can see them in the physical. They line up. So... One thing about relationships is they are all different. They're unique. <laughs> They're special. Uh, yeah, you guys should have a plot on that because I know some of you. <laughs> all right. <laughs> my relationship with anyone in this room is not going to be like my mom's relationship with the same people, or Pastor Regina's, or Lana's, or anybody else's. I would know more names, but I don't know that many more names. <laughs> Alright, <laughs> now, just because we are different does not mean we don't have similarities. A healthy relationship is a healthy relationship. Unhealthy relationship is unhealthy. With a healthy relationship, it brings about feelings of peace, and happiness, and anticipation. Unhealthy relationships. They bring about feelings of despair, anger, <sighs> sadness, defensiveness, unworthiness, inadequacy, and depression. A senior relationship with Jesus. <laughs> 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 
love. <laughs> Where do you guys feel? You know, there are times that that's where we're at. We're at the holy cow. Uh, you got lots of texts right there. <laughs> <laughs> nope. I don't feel worthy. You're inadequate. Um, well, you're depressed. You're full of despair. You are not anticipating anything because the next thing you anticipate is not going to be a good thing. That's not the case all the time. But everybody does feel like this at some point. Multiple times sometimes. And, you know, you have crossovers. You have days where you're just on top of the world. Everything's awesome. You have been forgiven. You're in the presence of God. You're like, oh, yes. I am there. I can walk down the street and turn people to this land spirit. I know it. <laughs> you know? You're there. So, there, there's roughly five levels <coughs> of relationship that God was dealing with me about. I tried to get out of it <laughs> numerous times. I did, but... You're stuck here in it anyway. So. <laughs> There's the hopeless relationships. You're stuck where you are. You can't change. You tried everything. What's the use? And you feel like there's no way out. Then there's the resigned relationship. I'm this way because God made me this way. If I change, I'm not being the way God made me. Hence, uh, resigned in my state. <laughs> uh, thank you. <laughs> then you land in the number three. You're content in your relationship. You feel him. He, he loves you. You don't want to push any boundaries. You don't want to go backwards. But you're, you're content where you're at. And then number four. Uh, this is the one I think I, I kind of live in. 90% of the time, is the confounded stage, where you want more, you're trying, you're desperate, you just wish God would actually give you an answer that makes sense. Um, I've told Pastor before, you know, I prayed and I was like, God, I need, I need a very specific, that's not me. <laughs> I turned that out. <laughs> I'm not here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, I, I needed a specific answer, so I said, all right, I'm going to open my Bible, I'm going to pray, I need this word in particular, I need to know who I'm submitting under, and I need to know what ministry I'm supposed to be moving into now. And you know what, you know it, I flipped my Bible open, and I had those specific words in the answer. I've... I mean, it was so clear you couldn't have been any clearer. <laughs> this is the way he answered me. <laughs> this is the ministry I've chosen, the ministry of reconciliation. I was like, darn it. <laughs> <laughs> why? Because I've been doing that for 20-some years. God, well, you know, different. You're supposed to be different. <laughs> and then I said, all right, who am I supposed to submit to? And he said, submit to the Lord. And him only. I'm like, that's awesome, but that doesn't help me. <laughs> so 90% of the time, a lot of us probably feel right about there. We know God. We love God. We want more. We're not satisfied with where we're at, but getting a straight answer is like pulling teeth. <laughs> and you're just like, okay, I'm going to hold on to the only thing I know, which is, I love God. God started. He loves me. Amen. <laughs> so, if you've been there, I feel your pain. Um, the next one is what I call the spiritual high. I'm uh, pretty sure most of us have been there at least once. Where Isaiah, you know, he steps in. He sees the train of God in the throne room. The angel touches his lips with a coal. All of his iniquities are purged away. He is like ninth heaven. And God says, hey, who will go? <laughs> you know, casually asking a question. And Isaiah is like, 
I'm this high. He'll say yes to anything. He's like, I'll do it. It's me. You want to send me? That's the spiritual high. We've been there. We're like, oh, God, yes. This is oh so wonderful. I'm like, literally, I walk by this person. got slay the spirit. I can't even walk straight. People think I'm drunk. I've been on the floor for two and a half hours laughing. You know, we've been somewhere. You know, we're just like, oh, my God. Spiritual high. We'll say yes to anything. And... And then he expects us to actually do it. And then we're like, oh, we drop right back down to level number one. How the heck am I supposed to do this? So we, we cycle <laughs> through these uh, levels. But my question, <coughs> occasionally we get stuck in these levels. So do you really think God called us to a hopeless walk with him? No. no. Do you really think God made you just so you'll go to hell? That's the resigned state. Oh, God made me. He made me to be this person. You know? I have an example of that because that's something I've had me teach or study. Sorry, I've been studying a lot. <laughs> Pharaoh, all of us think he was made to drive the children of Israel out of Egypt. He was. That was his task. God anointed him for that. He was supposed to drive them out with a very firm hand. Five times. Between Exodus 7 and Exodus 14, well, actually 14 times, the word hardened is used yeah. in reference to his heart. Nine times, God hardened Pharaoh's heart. One time, it just said his heart was hardened. Five times, Pharaoh hardened his own heart. Now, God hardened it a couple times in the beginning, but then Pharaoh had an opportunity to do something different. He had a choice. He could have driven the children of Israel out, completed the work. They were supposed to be out. They were supposed to be firmly removed. It would have been a done deal. But Pharaoh chose to harden his heart and set himself against them. He made them have to make their own straw and bricks. Use the straw to make their own bricks. You know, things like this. Um, another guy was... Uh, Ahu? Oh, Elhu? Sorry, I forgot his name. Anyway, <laughs> he was anointed by God. Specifically, Elijah was told to find Elisha, anoint him, anoint another prophet, and anoint this guy to wipe out all the descendants of Ahab. This guy got anointed. He wiped out all the descendants of Ahab. And he did not walk godly. He didn't follow after that. He went and served some other guy. And then there was, uh, one of our favorite ones, um, Saul in the Bible, New Testament. He had this opportunity. He knew he was right. He knew he was serving after God with all his heart. He was a Pharisee. But he also had a chance to change. So there goes our thoughts about we're stuck in that place and God made us just for that. Because God always gives us a chance to change, a chance to do something else. Because we're... Ah, I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> anyway, because we are who we are, God is a good God. He always gives us choice. Because you're assigned a job that is difficult or unpleasant doesn't mean you are not supposed to just do that for the rest of your life. You can be anointed to do different things. And... If you go to 2 Timothy 2.20, which most of you probably didn't expect a Bible study here. <laughs> but it says, In a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also wood and earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. And then in 21 it says, If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified in meat for the pastor's use, and prepared unto every good work. So that confirms that we have choice. We don't have to stay in the one thing that we were supposed to do at the time. We can go on to other things God anoints us for. They're not always to be dishonored. Some are to be honorable. Some are to be great. Some are to be really wild and awesome and stuff we can't even imagine. Yeah. Which leads us right back down to... <coughs> 
one or level three or something like that, <laughs> where we go, oh, I can't do this. <laughs> okay, um, everybody roughly know what a vessel is? Something to hold something. All right. Um, how about the word honor? Yeah. Uh, that's right. Where a price is fixed, uh, price is paid. The honor of one who has a reason or rank or state of office, which he holds deference or <coughs> reverence. And then there's just the honor we all can pretty much figure that one is not awesome. <laughs> but then how do we get out of our levels? If we are on level one, hopeless. <coughs> I can't get out. How do we get out of that spot? How do we get out of being stuck in that I can't situation? Change the situation. Change the situation. How do you do this? When emotionally you are on the bottom and see no way out. One second at a time. And then you have to change your way of thinking also. Yes. So. You got to come to the reasoning behind why you're there. You cannot force what's not in your power. Um, so you got to come back to your relationship. <coughs> you cannot change the other half. You can't change God. So the person who's going to have to change is going to be you. He, he is not going to change. <laughs> He's stubborn that way. Um, <laughs> so how do you change, change yourself? All starts with a decision. Change your perspective. Change the way you're thinking. Matt says this all the time. We should have like a mantra in our head. But it's really hard sometimes to get the mantra going when you're really, really down there thinking about how far up you have to go to get to daylight. So, decision. You have to let go of all your preconceived ideas of how you're supposed to be, who you're supposed to be, where you're supposed to be, what you're supposed to be doing, and what you think God thinks you are doing, being, and saying. All right? We think a lot of things. Doesn't mean they're true. Doesn't mean they're not true. But it, not any of it is actually what God really thinks about us. So we have to come to the point where like, hum, okay. And we gotta let it go. We gotta give it to him. And then. Okay. So, that's how you get step one out of that one. So, say you're in the resigned level. You're, you're the way you are because God made you that way. We kind of debunked that one with the whole you, know, you purge yourself from these things and you're gonna be a vessel to honor. God did not make you to go to hell. So you have to make the decision. Again, it just boils down to that decision. You gotta make the decision to let go of what you think about, what you think God thinks about you, and be willing to embrace his plan. And that sometimes is a lot of fun because then you land on level one again and you're like, I can't do this. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> but, anyways, uh, I've had to crawl out a lot of times. Uh, so that's the, the resign stage. We have to let it go. And we have to be willing to trust that God's plan for us. It doesn't matter how we think of it. He has the plan. We can get there. Um, and then we have to think what he actually thinks. So... You know, if we are the light of the world, which is as in the Bible, he calls us to be the light. We are not a very good light if we are not doing much. Um, he calls us his friends in John 15, 15. So if he's our friend, ignoring him is not the best strategy for maintaining that friendship. <laughs> <laughs> so any other ideas? You guys all said you got to change your perspective. Any other ideas when you are resigned to your fate? How do you think you're going to be able to get out of that state of mind? Speak it out. What else? 
Or have the support of others like what we're doing mm -hmm. right now. That's right. You have the support of others. That's why we meet in a church building with other people and not by ourselves where we could kind of, you know, have all the blocks on ourselves and chips and nobody knocks them off for us. That's uncomfortable. <laughs> Um, then you're level three content. This one, I hate to say it, but I spend a lot of time in this stage, but I tried not to stay there too often. <laughs> content. This is one, it's harder because we're not dissatisfied. We're not overly dissatisfied, so it's harder to get out of the state sometimes. Um, so sometimes Jesus has to let it get really uncomfortable. Sometimes I think this is what happened with Job. He was content. He where he was at. He was doing what he was doing all the time. He wasn't going further. He wasn't going back. But he was kind of content. And then and then he got uncomfortable. <laughs> and sometimes Jesus let it get very uncomfortable. And then this one also it begins with a decision. When we come to the point where somebody makes us realize. We're content. We have to decide to stay that way, or if we're going to decide to do something different. So, decision is a large part of how to change everything. But the other thing about being content is it is lukewarm. Uh -huh, I see you all know that one. <laughs> we don't like to think of ourselves as lukewarm. Yeah, I mean that's just that's not godly. <laughs> But that's what we're doing. We're not going forward. We're not going backwards. We're just sitting there getting the warm. And um, so somebody gave me this visual like 20 years ago. It's like being a sponge, a dish sponge. You're sitting in this water, just a little bit of water. God poured it into you at one time, and you're sitting there, and you're just sitting there, and you're just sitting there, and time is going on, and you're just sitting there. You're not squeezing out, and you're not getting more water put on you. So what is happening to this sponge? Nothing. It stinks. <laughs> you get a little slimy. <laughs> you get a lot of sticky, gross bacteria. This is you guys in the lukewarm state. This is what contentment brings. <laughs> now, do you really think Jesus wants to get all snuggly with this? No. He loves you too much to let you stay that way. So, <laughs> so this is this is the level three that hopefully we'll push ourselves out of now. We're not going to be satisfied to stay there. And, and now it makes us go into level four, which I already said I spend 90% of my time probably in level four. I'm confounded. I want more. I desire more. I'm trying. I'm praying. I'm doing all the things I can. And, I can't get a straight answer to save my life. So, <laughs> how do you get out of this state of mind? <laughs> um, so, once again, it comes down to a decision. Um, and most of these things are things about ourselves we have to change the way we think. And, so, oh yeah. So, this is also human nature has us going from despondent, hopeless, resigned, content, and confounding to what it to be at level five. So confounded is your, I gotta be at level five scenario. That's the way I put it. You go from like one, two, and three straight into, I need to be at five, which is running over full God's spirit, blah, 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 blah. Um, so how do you get out of this one? <laughs> it starts with forgiveness. This one, you gotta forgive yourself, other people, wherever you're you're being held in the I'm not there yet. I got it. Woo! Sorry. I shouldn't have been reading about it. Hi! Hello. There's food up there. So, you've made a decision, you let go of all your preconceived ideas, your fears, your false beliefs, you've asked forgiveness for believing God. Oh, this is cycling back through the cycles, and you just, it's like you, this constant repetitive thing. You may be at level four, and suddenly you're right back at level one again. So this is, you know, keeps going. Uh, you have to ask for forgiveness for believing God was a bad father. 
Jesus was just toying with you, leading you on or cheating you out of a good relationship and making a mistake with you. So you have to think of yourself and him. And whatever else you come to, which is your realization, I'm not you. <laughs> um, whether he's leaving you behind because you're not worth it or you fear your fear of failure, so you don't want to leave your safety net. Okay. Whatever it is that's holding you back, that is what you're forgiven. And then. Uh, you also get super frustrated when you're in the confounded stage. Don't ask me how I know that one either. Um, <laughs> um, Micah 6 8. So sometimes this level five, 4, we're super frustrated, we're confounded, we want more, we can't get there. But it, it paralyzes us in where we're going to go because we're afraid to do anything because we can't get a straight answer from any anyone resembling God at all. So it cycles us back around to being frustrated and angry and having to ask for forgiveness and be forgiven and all over again. It's a vicious cycle. <laughs> but so if you, if you go to Micah 6, 8, it says he has showed you what is good and what does the Lord require of you to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. So if all else fails, do the right thing. <laughs> you know, if you need a decision about something, do the thing that you have peace about. That is not going to give you no peace in a situation he's going to be in. Uh, Paul, at one point in time, was told, if you go to this place, they're going to bind you, they're going to put you in chains, they're going to put you in prison. Paul went anyway. Mm -hmm. Because he had peace. He knew that's where he was supposed to go. It wasn't going to be pleasant, but he had peace about doing it. Mm -hmm. So when, uh, when we have to make a decision about something, do the thing that has peace involved in it. But the rest of the things, just do the thing that's right. You know? Follow these things. You know what a Christian's supposed to be. Act like a Christian. It's hard, but do it. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, and then there's your level five. Sometimes we get there, we think we've arrived. We're on our spiritual high. We're busting out with the spirit. We're full of God's presence, <clears throat> and we're, we're think we have arrived. This is the place we should live all the time. What happens if you stay in level five? Can't grow. You're in level three again. This is amazing. You have landed yourself right back in. I love him. He loves me. I'm complacent, and you're not growing. So we can't stay. Relationships are evolving, growing. They're always moving forward. So, um, you guys got blessed with this awesome message. <laughs> Because, you know, like I said, God wouldn't let me let it go. Um, but these are our own stories. We have the choice. You know, if we purge ourselves, we have the choice to be that vessel of honor. We have the choice to make it a love story that's worth reading. Yeah. You know, these are our love stories. Make them, make them good. <laughs> um, so... That's about all I had. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Wow.